An off-duty officer was shot and wounded on his way to work. The work of protecting New Yorkers, defending our city. The work Officer Morrow was doing he was, when he was killed in the line of duty. Those of us who have put on the uniform know what happened to Officer Morrow could happen to us any day. So uh, Eric Adams, very good speaker, speaker of the motion. He was very uh, strong on Friday, and he's talking about a 22-year-old cop last night, Martha, who, when he was driving to work in plain clothes, two young men uh, stopped by. At, he was stopped at the red light. Two men came up to him, and he got out of the car, and they shot him, and he ends up being brought to the hospital. It looks like he's in stable condition right now. That's the sixth cop shot this calendar That's year. Unbelievable. Uh, so this morning on my way to work, I kept getting passed on the turnpikes in New Jersey by huge caravans of police cars with their lights on. I'm sure it was probably the same in Long Island. Um, And I was so struck by it. So when I got to work, I went over to Fifth Avenue and walked around St. Pat's and spent some time, you know, thanking these police officers for what they do. And they're so happy when you just look them in the eye and say, thank you. Um, We know you put your lives on the line every day for us and we appreciate it. Simple thank you. Uh, goes a long way. They, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen so many police officers lining the streets up and down Fifth Avenue and reading the patches on their shoulders. Philadelphia, Staten Island, um, all over New Jersey, Long Island, upstate New York, Warwick, New York, all over. They came to show their respects for this police officer and for his partner, Jason Rivera, as well. So I asked. Uh, so I know a lot of, I, mean, I think half my town is firefighters and policemen. And I asked, like, what, what do they start at? And and a lot of them didn't know because a lot of them are retired. Once you're in your 40s, you have an opportunity to retire if you start right out of college or right instead of. Starting salary for the NYPD, $32,700. And this mayor just said, I want you living in the city. Really? Right? We're in a homeless Can't shelter? Can't afford it. 32000 Do I get to eat? Uh, that's And then he goes, uh, Suffolk County, which is, think about the Hamptons and think about more of a rural area, 42000 Nassau starts at thirty five thousand. Will go up to one hundred twenty one thousand after nine years. So that's a lot of risk. Now I know there's sometimes when it's downtime and it's a little boring, but they're also freezing to death. You know, at the time when you didn't even want to go outside to get the mail, there's guys working a twelve hour shift yep. outside. Yep. Uh, and they don't do it for the glory. And then it's okay. I mean, for a while, and we experienced this. People wanted to take pictures with the policemen with the NYPD hats, mm. and that's changed. My hope is that we hit a, hit a tipping point. Am I wrong to think that? Do you feel the same way, that we hit a tipping well, point? Well, I certainly felt it out there this morning. And I I wish that President Biden, who's coming tomorrow, and he's going to meet with Eric Adams, and that's good. I hope that that will expand the conversation about what a daunting crime problem we have in this country right now, which some people seem to think is is made up, which is ridiculous when you look at these numbers. But wouldn't it be great if President Biden was sitting next to Eric Adams in the front row of St. Patrick's today? Why not? Showing his solidarity with these police officers. I mean, how, how could that be a Bad. losing proposition? I mean, you might have some, you know, most fringe progressives who get upset about this. Those aren't the people that you want to be aligning yourself with anyway, right? I mean, this is a person who ran as a moderate president. There's no doubt that a couple decades ago, Joe Biden would have loved sitting in that front row with the police officers at a moment like this to show that he stands with them. And, you know, the argument, oh, well, it's too distracting to the, we don't want to take away. No, 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 no. Distract us, please. Come and, you know, New York City can handle having a president and a funeral for a police officer at the same time. There's no doubt. Martha, let's just play the political side of this. Forget about sincerity. Let's just put it aside. What political consultant would not have said what you said for him? Absolutely. Politically, just forget it. Hey, Joe, I, I know you don't like the cops. Let's say, but if you show up, this could reverse things. You could be leading on crime. And then if you have a one-on-one with Alvin Bragg, who wants to put criminals first, and then you yeah. say, I'm going to have an emergency. I'm going to call those two DAs out in California to see them. And I'm going to ask the Chicago. And you just have an emergency situation. We're going to re calibrate our view on crime. We overcorrected, corrected, which we thought was an overaggression in the 90s, I guess. I mean, just stand up and say, look, we all remember George Floyd. We all remember the difficult times that followed. There are bad cops in the world, just like there are bad teachers and bad priests. Bad people are out there, but we cannot 
broad stroke this entire profession of people who are here to help us. He could say this. He could say, let's build a bridge between what happened with George Floyd and this moment now where our hearts are broken for these young police officers who have lost their lives. Let's build a bridge to build a safer environment in cities across New York. He could say, I'm going to stand here with Eric Adams. I want to stand side by side with him. Then I'm going to get on the phone with the New York State Legislature and talk to them about bail reform. And I'm going to talk to them about this rule that basically says you can't prosecute anyone under 18. You know how many people under 18 are carjacking and stealing cars all around the metropolitan area in New York City right now? They can't even get busted for it. The police can't follow them down the road once they they drive off with a car. So we need change. And, you know, President Biden has a long career as a moderate Democrat. He ran that way. He said he was he said, remember when he said, I'm the Democratic Party now. Okay, go ahead. Do it. Be it. Be that person. Let's see. But he was Bernie. That's what he was. I guarantee you his poll numbers would go up seven, eight points if you did this. So a couple of things. Do you realize, too, that what they're working on now is electoral college reform, bipartisan. What they did is— uh, Everywhere I go, people are talking about that. Yeah, I know. But, Aren't they? <laughs> that's a good I'm point. being sarcastic. But infrastructure, too, they did it. He didn't even have a signing ceremony for it. So all along the side, you go, hey, uh, Mitch, you know, we've been buddies 50 years. We're both going to die soon. Uh, what else can we work on together? Just pump out five or six of them and just like rock everybody, yeah. rock every political side. Go, wow, I'm having trouble getting mad at him because he's kind of meeting with half exactly. my guys. And, and he would all of those liberal or moderate yeah. voters who live in suburbs around Shake this country would, would be like, that's the Joe Biden I wanted to to be president. They yeah. would look, they would sit up and say, thank you. That's exactly the person I thought I was voting for. Right. And on infrastructure, I mean. I don't understand. If I worked at the White House right now, I'd say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to roll out three big projects. We're going to show people, people with shovels, steamrollers, here are the three bridges that are be- we just started and broke ground on. Yeah. These bridges, we we commit to you. They will be done in eight months. We're going to show you the beginning of the bridge and the end of the bridge production. You're going to be amazed when you see how gleaming this country can be. Where is it? Yeah. And that's one thing I think that Trump would do because Trump loves that oh, stuff. Oh, he would— He'd be he out there with structure. his shovel. He'd yeah. say, you know, this this project should take 22 months, but I'm going to do it in five. You yeah. know, I mean, that's that's what would happen. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great. People love productivity and efficiency. They love it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.